What's up everyone and thanks for joining me again this week. This week's video is a response to T-SQL Tuesday number 118. If you're unfamiliar with T-SQL Tuesday, it's a monthly prompt where everyone in the community responds to the same professional development or technical topic. And this month's T-SQL Tuesday host is Kevin Chant who asks us to talk about our fantasy SQL Server topic, right? Like that one feature, if we could get it in SQL Server, what would it be? And so my response starts with this. Have you ever had a piece of data change in your database and wanted to or needed to know who changed it, when did that data change, right? Any kind of information about when a particular value in a table was modified, right? SQL Server has all these great DMVs and DMFs that tell you all this information about how your server is performing, how your queries are performing, internal details about your SQL Server, but nothing is built in that gives you the kind of logging or auditing capability that would help answer that question. So my ideal SQL Server feature that doesn't exist today would be some kind of setting that would allow uh, auditing to figure out who changed a piece of data in a table and when they changed it. And even though this feature doesn't exist out of the box today, there are some other features that kind of get you halfway there. For example, for starters, you can implement that kind of logging in your application layer. Your website or your form can log that information, send it in a stored procedure to SQL Server, and then you'll have that available. But as someone who has to implement this a lot, even though I can reuse code that I already have in a lot of my applications, it's just annoying that it isn't handled within the database itself. Another option that exists is adding things like default value constraints to your columns. Adding something like a default last modified date um, can work when you're inserting new rows and the column values for that column will get populated to you know, the current timestamp. There's lots of problems with that though, you know, the major one being that only really works for inserts, um, and, but additionally, right, unless you take a lot of extra precautions, anyone can just go into that column and update the value to whatever they want. You really lose the auditing integrity that that column of information is supposed to provide. I've also talked about temporal tables on this channel in the past, and there are features of a temporal table, right, that allow you to log what at what time certain values in the table are changing. Using the generated always for row start end, property on a column in a temporal table will keep the last modified date kind of for that row up to date, but it's really only a minor part of the temporal table and temporal tables have a lot of overhead for other features. And so from just like a pure logging, pure auditing standpoint, the temporal table doesn't really you know help you with that. Plus there's no real way to track a user in a temporal table without some other you know, crazy outside the box solution. And so the closest thing that I'm aware of that will kind of achieve this functionality of, of being able to tell you who modified a row of data at what time is to use a trigger. And the simplest way to explain this is to just look at a quick example. So in this example, we have a table test data. We have a primary key identity ID column, uh, three columns of data, right, that we're just gonna insert data into. And then you can see we have our last modified date and last modified user columns where we're gonna store that kind of audit logging information. So we can go ahead, we can create that table. That'll get created, excellent. Now here's our trigger code. Uh, here we're going to create a trigger called auto logger. It's going to run after any insert or update into our test data table. Um, we're going to capture both the current UTC time and the current user that is executing, uh, you know, an insert or an update statement on that table. And we're simply going to update our last modified date and last modified user columns on our table with those values whenever a piece of data is inserted or updated. So we're just going to go ahead and create this trigger. Perfect. Now let's see it in action. If we scroll down, we'll see our first set of values here. So we can insert a value into our table, right? Which right now is empty. We're gonna insert values into the call A, B, C columns. Um, and if we go ahead and run that, right? One row of data affected, we can go check that. Our test data uh, is in there. And even though we only inserted into these columns A, B, and C, we can see that we have a last modified date and a last modified user. This information is very handy because now we know exactly who modified that row. If we run an update statement, right, we just update some other column in that table where row ID equals one, 
Once again, one row affected and we go and check out our test data. We will see, right, my username has, stays the same, but the timestamp, my last modified date has updated to when the row was last modified. This trigger solution also gives us some other benefits, right? So if we have a questionable motive insert, so right, if someone's trying to maybe cover their tracks, here we're inserting not only into columns A, B, and C, but we're also trying to overwrite our last modified date and last modified user with some date in the future and a user called not me. Um, if we go ahead and run that, what we'll see is we do get a new row of data inserted into our table. Uh, however, those that false date and that false user right, don't get updated. The trigger goes ahead and actually correctly overwrites that value so we have a better audit log. And by the way, there's more things you can do with permissions and security on the SQL Server if you really need an auditing solution. And this is kind of a hackish way to get around it. Um, my need for this is really just to be able to help understand why problems are occurring with my data maybe, uh, to help me troubleshoot, to figure out who to go talk to. If you need a more robust security solution, maybe not the best answer. But looking at this other example, right, if we go ahead and do the same thing with our update statement, once again, updating to a fake date with a fake user. Um, predictably, as you can imagine, our trigger does not like that because immediately after that update happens, we actually update the row um, with the correct last modified date and the correct user. So while this trigger solution provides some of the functionality I want, it's not perfect. There's a lot of downsides to it, first of which is just the fact that it uses a trigger. And while there's nothing inherently wrong with triggers, they tend to be overlooked when troubleshooting problems on the database. And I just know from my own experience, if a trigger exists on a table and I don't know about it, um, it's not usually the first thing I go to debug. So if there's problems that stem from this, I feel bad for either my future self or you know for some other developer who has to look at this and maybe won't be aware that a trigger is you know causing some data to change automatically behind the scenes. Another reason this solution is an ideal is that that trigger is running an additional update statement after our actual update statement. This can have a performance impact and overall reduce the throughput of how many transactions we can do on our table you know, per second or per whatever time frame metric you wanna look at. Another major flaw with the solution is that triggers can only exist on individual tables. So if you wanted to audit an entire database, you will be stuck creating this trigger on every single table in that database. Not really fun. And finally, I think my biggest beef with this solution is that it adds extra columns to my actual table data, to my clustered index data. I don't necessarily always want to have this audit information. Honestly, most of the time, I don't need to use it. I don't care that it's there. When I'm running regular queries against my table, I don't want that data to show up when I do a select star. Or I don't want you know that data to have to be read into the buffer um, whenever someone else is running a query, right? And they're not selecting columns explicitly. It's just adding additional overhead to all my queries. Ideally, I would love a solution where this type of auditing data can be added to something like a just a non-clustered index, kind of like how uh, non persisted computed columns work uh, with indexes where the column itself doesn't exist on the clustered index, but its data exists on something like a non-clustered index. In my mind, that would be an ideal solution because I still have that data available when I need it, but it's not really gonna get used for any queries that don't need it. So I don't have that performance overhead. And finally, one other thing that makes this not ideal, right, is that this trigger ends up being a synchronous operation. Like I mentioned, it's gonna reduce our throughput of how many transactions we can have per second. Um, I would love for this type of feature to write to the database somewhere, right? Writing this audit data asynchronously, right? I don't need that data to exist immediately after the actual row of data is modified, but if it can kind of get written to the database eventually, if it's a few seconds later, right? If that helps the performance of my system, that would be like, super ideal. Um, that's what I would want that feature to look like. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, if you do need this auditing kind of capability, this trigger solution does work. Um, it's just not my ideal fantasy SQL server feature. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out the rest of the community's T-SQL Tuesday posts, and I'll see you again next week. Thanks. You're